everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, Pastor Wayne is out of town, and so he asked me to fill in. Uh, and so that's what I'm here for this, today. And so uh, let's go ahead and pray, uh, and then we will get started in our study for this evening. So let's pray. Father, we come to you this evening. God, we just thank you for uh, just, Father God, being an ever-present and uh, faithful God, Father God. God, we thank you for the fact that you have uh, provided and taken care of us during this time, Father God. God, we thank you for the fact that you are a trustworthy God. Lord, we do want to just come to you this evening, Father God. Lord, we want to lift up uh, everything that is going on, Father God. We know that uh, there is nothing that is beyond your eye nor your hand, Father God. And while a pandemic like this uh, is historical for us, and uh, Father God is taking us by storm, Father God, we know that, Lord, you are not restless, Lord, you are not uh, uneasy, Father God. Uh, and Father, there is nothing that is outside of your hand. So, Lord, we pray for uh, just everyone involved. Uh, Lord, for all of us, God, that you would just keep us safe and keep us healthy. Uh, Father God, we pray for all the doctors and uh, first responders and stuff who are dealing with uh, different things, not only their normal jobs and normal sicknesses and ailments and, and responses and calls, Father God, but also dealing uh, with added things on top of that right now and working long hours. So, Father God, we lift them up to you. Uh, Lord, we do want to lift up our, uh, our leaders, Father God, uh, from top to bottom, Lord, all the way from our local leaders as they decide uh, things about our area, Father God, to our state leaders as there is conversations about opening and reopening, Father God, all the way to the President and the uh, House and Senate, Father God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would just be with them, uh, Lord, Father God, that you would uh, give them wisdom, Father God, help them to uh, act in ways, Father God, that are glorifying and honoring to you, Father God, help them uh, to remember their role as representatives of people, Father God, uh, and Lord, that through this, uh, not only uh, may we be safe, but Father God, uh, Lord, maybe this will be used to call people back to you, Father God, uh, for a renewal of dependence upon you, Father. Lord, I pray for the church, uh, not only our church, uh, Father God, but the church in general, especially uh, here in this country, Father God, that we will uh, not be like the lost, Father God, and, and living in fear and living in anguish, but Father God, that we will stand strong and uh, be able to use this time, Father God, uh, to show you to those around us, Father God, that they may see that uh, there is hope beyond uh, just what, what's right in front of them, Father God. Lord, I pray tonight as we look into your word, God, that you would be glorified and honored. Father God, I pray that you would just help me to speak clearly and help us, Father God, to see your word uh, and to hear from you, Father God, and, and in turn, Father God, to grow closer to you, God, to rely on you more. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for all, and we just ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, tonight, um, we're going to come from Psalm 3, uh, and Psalm 3 is a familiar psalm. Uh, matter of fact, our choir sings a song uh, that is really this psalm uh, put to uh, music, uh, and so... What we're dealing with tonight, as I got to thinking about, um, you know, what, what would be good to discuss and, and really just praying about what maybe God wanted to uh, discuss tonight. Um, you know, we are living in uh, unprecedented times. Uh, we're living in times that really are historical. Uh, no time that I can think of in the past um, has the world been impacted in the way that it is. Um, especially in our, our nation's past. Uh, there's not really a time, uh, you know, where everyone was hunkered down and, and we were um, just things were so uncertain. Uh, and really, uh, the, biggest, the biggest thing about these times, uh, Father, or the biggest thing about these times is that fear has become the emotion of the day. Um, we live in fear. We're, we're afraid of viruses and we're afraid of maybe what the government's going to do and we're afraid of uh, you know, whether or not freedoms will be restored or, or just so many different things that people are afraid of right now. And, and really, uh, the idea of safety has uh, trumped any, everything else, uh, being safe. Um, and so tonight, what I want us to look at and what I want us to see is that we can trust God beyond everything else that's coming on. And what we're going to see here uh, in this psalm is that David, when he wrote this, um, he uh, opens up with really discussing a time uh, where everything seems to be against him, and yet uh, he still shows reliance on God. So let's go ahead and read Psalm 3, 
and then we'll get uh, into looking at it a little deeper. Uh, Psalm 3, verse 1 starts, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my, my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and your blessing is upon your people. Uh, So David here really, matter of fact, uh, in my Bible, there's a little notation above this psalm uh, that this is a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Um, And so this is a time in David's life when uh, David is, uh, as it said, is is fleeing from his son. Uh, This is post post Bathsheba, and Absalom has decided he wants to take over the kingdom, uh, and he's trying to kill his dad. Uh, and he's after his dad. Joseph, or David's on the run. This is later in his life. And there's a period of time in the history of David where uh, he is um, not on the throne. He, he's running for his life. He's hiding in caves. He's doing all these things. Uh, and this is during this time. And the first thing we see here, uh, our first point, if you will, is, is it says here, many are they who trouble me. Um, uh, and he starts out with this description of really, uh, we might say it this way, the world is just against me. Um, it seems like everywhere I turn, someone uh, is, is against me. Someone is trying to harm me. Someone is trying to uh, take from me. And that's really kind of what we see here. Uh, he, he, he makes this second comment, many are they who rise up against me, uh, and many are they who trouble me. And so David is just giving this description uh, of really feeling overwhelmed with uh, the people who are against him. Now, many of us have probably not uh, been on the run uh, from our sons. Uh, No one's been probably trying to take our kingdom. And yet at the same time, uh, we're living in a time where it really does seem like the world may be against each one of us. Um, uh, You know, maybe not necessarily against us individually, but it just seems like... um, Every, every time we turn around, there's some kind of new complication. There's something new that is, is interrupting us or is harming us. Uh, you know, maybe you're in a situation where uh, maybe your job has been furloughed or, or maybe cut out altogether. Uh, maybe you're in a situation where you're self-employed and uh, things haven't, uh, you know, funds haven't been coming in. And, you know, maybe you weren't able to get the aids that were needed or, or whatever it is. Maybe you've gotten sick yourself or maybe you've lost a family member during this time and not been able to attend a funeral or just so many different things. It seems like every time we turn around, um, even as we're starting to kind of slowly come out of it, it just seems like there's one thing after another. Um, and, and sometimes if we're not careful, anytime it's like that, whether it's globally as we're dealing with now or Maybe even other times uh, that have nothing to do with this. Maybe you've been in a time in your uh, you know, past where maybe you've lost a job or uh, you know, maybe something. every time you turn around, something new was breaking in the house and finances were a little tight and you didn't have money for new refrigerators or air conditioners or whatever it was. But it seemed like no matter where you turned, uh, life was just trying to take you down. That's kind of where David is. Uh, and really, that's something that we can identify with. And, and when we get in those situations, uh, if we're not careful, what seems to happen is fear will creep in. And we start to become, take on an attitude of, uh, oh no, what will happen next? You know, what's going to be the next thing? Every time something happens, it's like, oh, I expected this. And if we're not careful, we take on this, this attitude that fear uh, starts to control our daily lives. And very many uh, are dealing with that right now where they're just afraid of what to do. And, and what does it mean if I go to the store? Am I going to catch this virus? You know, what does it mean if I, if I start to open up a little bit? How is that going to affect us? Whatever it is. Uh, and so that's kind of where David is here. He says, many increased who have troubled me, and many are they who rise up against me. Not only are they rising up against me, but in verse 2 it says, many are they who say to me, there is no help for him in God. So not only 
are we having a situation where he feels like every time he turns around, it's just something new. But then on top of that, uh, it feels like people are taunting him saying, hey, you know, God is not real. There is no help in God. You know, you have no hope beyond that which you can provide for yourself. That is becoming a familiar mantra of our day. Uh, as we hear many times in the news when it comes to different situations, you know, thoughts, thoughts and prayers don't help. And um, as people uh, are calling out against this idea of trusting in God, um, and we've seen that increasing over the past few years, where uh, not only is there a mocking, but there seems to be uh, increasing in our nation hostility towards this idea that there is a God that we can seek and there is a God that we can pray to. Uh, many are calling out saying there is no help in God because there is no God that exists. Um, and sometimes if we're not careful, uh, even as Christians, as uh, Pastor Wayne spoke on this, I think it was this past Sunday or the, or the week before, he talked about practical atheism. Um, and sometimes if we're not careful, we can get so bogged down in life, so bogged down, especially in situations like this, that we almost tend to take this attitude on ourselves. Um, where we know there is a God. We, it's not like we, don't, we no longer believe in God. Uh, but at the same time, uh, sometimes we kind of take this attitude on and we become, as Pastor Wayne put it, practical atheists, where we, by word, believe in God, but maybe in action or in our reliance, uh, we don't really believe in God. And so that's the situation that Dave is in. Uh, many are troubling him, and many are calling him out saying, hey, there is no God to help you. Uh, you have... You have no hope beyond the hope that you can provide for yourself. Uh, but what we see here, following verse 1 and 2, uh, is really a fantastic response by David. Uh, not only to the people who are calling him out about not being able to trust God, but just to life. Uh, David, David confronts the fear that is going on, uh, and he confronts it with reality and truth that God is, in fact, reliable. Our second point we could look at here. And it's really verse 3 and 4. Uh, and he says, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Uh, in verse 3, this phrase, the lifter of my head, um, I like this phrase. Uh, it kind of, if, uh, the way I think of it, if you will, uh, is um, much like a little boy. Maybe, maybe when you were young, uh, boy or girl, uh, maybe you were playing some sports. You know, maybe the game did not, maybe the game did not go as you had hoped, or maybe uh, you in particular did not play. And I kind of imagine this young child walking up to their father, head hanging low, uh, just burdened by uh, the results of the game or whatever the situation is. And his father takes his hand in his head and lifts his head and has him look at him and tells him, "I want you to know that you know I am proud of you and that I love you." And gives a hug. That's the visual that I kind of get here. Uh, you know, the, we have the phrase of, you know, just a head hung low. And, you know, when we, when we think of that, when you hear about somebody's head hanging low, you know, you, you pretty much always imagine uh, that this is a person who is downtrodden. This is a person who uh, life has got the better of them and their head is hanging low. And so uh, this is the lifter of the head. This is, some, this is uh, David saying, no matter what's going on around me, uh, he says, you are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head, the one who picks me up, the one who helps me to see things beyond the daily toils and troubles that are coming, uh, and helps me to look at you beyond those things. Uh, and so we're here in direct response to our uh, front section here, where David describes the uh, trouble that he is in, in direct response to his, that, he says, but you, O Lord, you are a shield for me. Uh, when we think of a shield, you know, obviously, uh, we don't use shields uh, very often here nowadays. Um, but, you know, when you think back in this day, or even in our modern times, there's, you'll talk about digital shields, you know, life lock and those kind of things. They'll, they'll use a shield to represent, because a shield represents protection. Uh, if, if you can think back to the days when shields were commonly used in battle, uh, or even if you think to our modern uh, police movies where they have their riot gear and they have those uh, shields that they'll be wearing. Uh, all those things, it's a barrier that's meant to protect the carrier of the shield from the danger in front of them. 
Uh, and so here David is saying, although there are many who rise up against me, there are many who trouble me, there are many who say there's no help for him in God. You, O oh God, are my shield. You are the one who is my protector from those who seek to do me harm, from those who seek to disparage your name. He says, you are my shield, you are my glory, and you are the one who lifts my head. One of the important things that we see here, starting out in verse 3, and this is where uh, we really need to kind of think in on in our own lives when it comes to dealing with fear. One of the most important things we see here is David, his response is not anything about himself. It's nothing about what he has accomplished or that he is the king of Israel or that he you know, has authority or anything like that. Uh, then, and we must remember that this is, this is not coming from uh, you know, somebody who is a nobody. This is the king of everything. This is King David. Uh, and yet he says, you, O Lord, are my shield, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. His dependence is completely upon God. And I think when, uh, one of the things that is probably the biggest thing that we run into when it comes to times of fear, when it comes to times of, of trouble, uh, is we stop keeping our eyes on God. We stop relying on God. And we start to maybe think and figure out how we're going to uh, come up with the answers. And I know uh, this is easy to do. I, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't know me, then you obviously won't know this. But uh, if you do, then you know that I've recently started a, a small business um, selling cars. Uh, it's just something I've always wanted to do. Uh, and it's really, as you can imagine, a bad time uh, to be doing something like that. Um, and uh, during this time, you know, finances have gotten really low. Uh, you know, there's been times when we've, uh, multiple times, you know, in the past couple months where especially the business finances, uh, you know, they've gotten low enough that, uh, uh, you know, I was concerned about how we were going to pay the business bills and, you know, not taking a paycheck. Uh, and obviously, as you can imagine, uh, if you don't take a paycheck, you have trouble paying your personal bills. Uh, and so there was definitely been some times where that fear started to creep in of how are we going to, how are we going to make it? Uh, and, and the temptation is to start to try to, to scheme and start to try to come up with, with this and, oh, if I can do this or I can do that or I can borrow this or I can borrow that. And not that any of those things aren't necessarily the will of God. Uh, but if we're not careful, what we tend to do uh, is we tend to start to rely on the answers that we can provide over the answer, over seeking for God and over looking for his answers. And, and in my own life, uh, in these past few months, uh, God has shown himself faithful time and time and time again. You know, when we thought that nothing was going to happen, when we thought we were about to be in serious trouble, uh, providence would come through, uh, you know, a car would sell or, um, you know, stimulus check would come in or whatever it was, something would happen that, that came right at that right time, after we were seeking God for, uh, for answers and solutions and asking Him to provide and, and just committing to faithful trusting in Him, uh, He has provided time and time and time again. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I have seen in my own life, and then we can see in the life of here, David, uh, or here in the life of David, that it is so important that when we go through these times, we don't rely on our own wisdom and our own direction and human wisdom, but they rely on God to be that shield. We rely on God to be that glory and that comforter and that lifter of our head. We rely on God to be the one who takes care of us. He says in verse 4, I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. So here in verse 3 and 4 in this second section, we really just see David uh, crying out to God and depending upon God. Uh, from the description we get in verse 1 and 2, uh, David is overrun with trouble and tribulation. Uh, you know, there are people that are literally seeking to kill him. Uh, and yet, in the midst of that, he cries out to God and he says, But you, O Lord. Uh, and so that's one of the things that, out of this that I want to encourage us in. We live in a time that could easily be overrun by fear. But our response should be, But you, O Lord, you are my shield. You are the, my glory. You are the one who lifts my head. I cried out to you, and you hear me from your holy hill. Dependence upon God. So not only is there dependence upon God, but in our last section here in verses 5 through 8, we really see this idea of, of God being the sustainer. 
In verse 5, and he says, I lay down and I slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Verse 5 is so important in this understanding of what's being talked about here. Verse 5, and uh, uh, especially verse 5, he says, I lay down and I slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. Uh, if there's anything that's hard to hold on to during difficult times, uh, that is the ability to rest. Um, there's a few key points in Scripture where we kind of see this idea uh, uh, laid out of being able to rest in the midst of turmoil. How many nights have you, uh, you know, lost sleep here recently? Uh, how many nights have you kind of been a little restless? Uh, I, I, can, I, I can say that, you know, Many times, if we want to know whether or not we are living in fear, uh, we can look at the quality of our sleep. Uh, and uh, what we see here in David, after he declares that, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me, and everything that we just looked at in verse 3 and 4. In verse 5, he says, I lay down and slept, and I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. This is the declaration of David and to say, no matter what's going on around me, I was able to rest in the Lord. I was able to, to take time and just rest and relax. Um, uh, I uh, uh, don't know because I wasn't actually there, but I have read and been told, uh, you know, when we look at um, the description of like the Last Supper and really any kind of suppers from that time, uh, many times when they were with friends, they would kind of lay down and eat. Not, you know, fully down, but more of a reclining laying on the side. Uh, and eating. Uh, and uh, it's supposed to be, uh, the reason that was is because taking that posture of laying down was kind of a uh, sign that you were trusting those around you. Um, uh, and so uh, it really that's kind of been a thing that's a, a long time thing. We can also think of a, a dog. Uh, you know, they say uh, that if a dog will show you their belly, uh, if a dog will lay on its back and show you its belly, that, that is a sign that a, a dog fully trusts you. Uh, and so we can kind of use these illustrations as an idea to really kind of get an idea of what David's experiencing here. David is laying down in the presence of God. He's laying down really even in the presence of his enemies because he knows uh, that he has a God who can take care of him. He has a God who is his shield. He is fully resting in God. Uh, and he says in verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. What a declaration this is uh, from David. Uh, you know, the idea of ten thousands of people. Uh, I mean, I have never personally uh, been in a situation where I've been in a crowd that numbered in the ten thousands, but maybe you have. Maybe you've gone to some sort of large big name concert uh, where there was, you know, ten, twenty thousand people, whatever it is. Um, and maybe you've been in that situation. And if you have, maybe you can imagine, what if all of those people were against you? You know, what if your enemies literally numbered in the tens of thousands? And yet, in the midst of that, David says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. David is fully resting in God. He's fully trusting in God, no matter the situation. Uh, that's definitely something that we should strive to look towards. Uh, how much would you love to be able to rest during these times? Uh, how much would you love to be able to not fret and not worry? That's not going to come through some guru. That's not going to come through reading books other than maybe the Bible. That's not going to come through uh, internet people or anything like that. That's only going to come when we can rest and rely on God and know that He is a God who is able to provide and take care of us no matter the situation. Even though this is a global pandemic, there is, we do not serve a God who is uh, uh, taken aback. We do not serve a God who is stressed out. We do not serve a God who is running thin on resources. We serve a God who is able and capable uh, no matter what. Not only do we see that, but then in verse 7 and 8, he says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and your blessing is upon your people. When I read verse 7, um, 
I kind of got to thinking of uh, uh, grade school. You know, recess, there's, there's always a bully. You know, no matter what, there's always a bully in, in grade school. And, and bullies, as is their nature, uh, they tend to pick on the weak. Uh, they tend to pick on those who can't really defend themselves. They pick on those who uh, uh, are not um, confident in themselves. Uh, and yet sometimes you'll see, you'll see it in movies, or maybe you've been this person or seen this in your own life, uh, there will be this, uh, this protector, uh, this larger kid who is not a bully, but who has grown weary and tired of seeing the bully do what the bully does. Uh, and so many times uh, you'll see this person kind of step in. Uh, when the bully is picking on the, the weaker kid, you'll see this stronger kid step in and, and, and confront the bully and maybe even fight the bully. And that's kind of the visual I get here. David says, you know, the world is against me and I am not strong enough to take on this bully that is taking me on. But you, God, have stepped in and you have struck all the enemies on the cheekbone. You punched them in the cheek. And he says, you have broken the teeth of the ungodly. So we get this visual here of, of, a, of someone who is stronger than us, who has stepped in in front of us and who has taken the fight on uh, to our enemy. And so David here, he rests in his sustainer, not because of some false hope, not because he is foolishly blind to the world around him, not because he is too much of an optimist uh, to see the world many times, uh, people who are not optimists, they will say, I'm not a pessimist, I'm a realist. I just look at the world like it is. Uh, and, and, you know, that's not what David's saying. He, he's not just a blind optimist hoping in something that will never come to fruition. David is resting, David is relying on God because he knows that his God is able and capable uh, and can do far beyond anything he can. He knows that his God is a strong God. His God is strong enough to take on the enemies blow for blow. His God is strong enough to win the battles that David cannot. And so during our time here, we see this in the life of David, and we see this time of turmoil and trouble. And the thing that I want to encourage us in is we serve that same God. So many times we may find people like David, or you know, I think of especially Paul in the New Testament, uh, Peter, you know, those kind of things. Sometimes Peter's a little more reliable because sometimes Peter's a goober. But, uh, you know, these different guys, sometimes they seem almost unattainably reliable on God. We see these Old Testament prophets, how they called down fire and they, you know, uh, called in uh, droughts that lasted for years and all these things. And sometimes those almost seem to be beyond our reach. That that's a reliance on God or that's a faith in God that we can never get to. And yet the thing we must remember, all of these people, David and Paul and so on and so forth, all of these people were simply human beings. They were no different than you or I. The only thing that separated them from us is the fact that they chose to believe that God was greater than anything around them. Uh, and so that's really what I, what I want to encourage us in as we have looked at this today and maybe you're going through, maybe you're dealing with fear. And maybe it has nothing to do with the virus. Maybe it has to do with uh, other situations in your life. But what I want to encourage us in tonight, as we have looked at this in the life of David, uh, as it may seem that life is coming against you, and it may seem that you are unable and incapable to defeat the enemies who have come against you, you have a God who is capable and willing to take on your battles. But he will only do it if we rely on him. If we call out to him, if we rest in him, if we truly believe that God is capable, if we truly seek him to uh, be our shield. And so I want to encourage you tonight, if you're dealing with uh, any kind of fear, uh, if you're dealing with any kind of uh, just uh, anxiety, uh, turmoil in your life, uh, I want to encourage you, uh, just give that over to God. Seek God. Lay it at his feet. Uh, confess it as sin. Confess it as fear. Confess it that you've not been relying on him. And then daily, every day, and that's, that's really probably the key. Uh, you know, so many times the question comes up, well, how do I do that? Well, it really is a daily thing. Uh, it's every day that you get started, every day that you uh, wake up, every time you start to feel that fear, you confess it again. And you say to God, God, I am confessing this as sin, I'm confessing this as unbelief, and I am confessing reliance upon you. Uh, one verse that, or is, 
uh, come up in my life a lot recently, and I can't remember the passage, and I apologize for that, but it's, I just, it's an easy verse. Um, uh, Jesus is talking with uh, a guy, and uh, he's kind of dealing with uh, some unbelief at first, and then Jesus kind of confronts him on it, and he says he does believe, and, and his response to Jesus is, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Uh, and that's been something that I've uh, really confessed a lot in my life is dealing with some of the things I told you about earlier, of financial instability and just wondering what's going to happen, you know, trying to confront that fear and that anxiety by just confessing belief in God and then asking God to help my unbelief, help me to believe greater, help me to have greater faith in you, depending upon God for the faith to depend upon God. Um, and so that's what I want to encourage us in today. And I want you to just take a moment, hopefully, uh, look within yourself, look at how you've handled the situations and different things, and just decide, are you living by fear or are you living by faith? Uh, are you trusting God or are you cowering at the uh, situations that are in front of you? Uh, let me encourage us all to seek God greater, to depend on God, because we have a world who has no hope. We have a world and friends and family around us who have no answers, and they're needing answers. And if we are living in our own fear, we have no opportunity to tell them about Christ. We have no opportunity to tell them uh, about someone who can uh, give them, or who can be their sustainer. Uh, and so uh, I just pray that all of us as a church, collectively, as, as Poplar Springs, that we can be uh, a rock for this community not because of anything we've done, but because we simply rely on God uh, in every situation. I want to thank you for joining us tonight um, and giving me this opportunity. I want to thank Pastor Wayne uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, and uh, I want to just pray uh, and close this out. And uh, hopefully soon we'll all be back together. Uh, and I just want to uh, just pray for each one of us. So let's pray. Father, we come to this evening. Uh, God, I just thank you for the fact that, Father, you are a God who can be believed. Uh, Lord, so many religions and groups throughout history have believed in uh, feeble gods, gods who uh, are not fully capable, gods who are not omniscient, gods who cannot provide for their life, or if they believe they can, they believe they won't. Uh, and they must make uh, child sacrifices and human sacrifices and all these different sacrifices just to hopefully get the attention uh, of some volcano god or some sun god or whatever they believed in. And yet, God, we know a God who not only can, but will. And not only can and will, but wants to, Father God. We know a God who is capable and who loves us enough not just to be some God sitting up upon a throne, casting down lightning bolts or uh, throwing down blessings, but, Father, a God who took the time to sacrifice of himself for Christ to come and give his life on the cross so that we might know you personally, so that we might be sons and daughters and heirs uh, to your kingdom, Father God. Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I just give you the glory and honor and praise, and I pray that you would help each one of us as your children, Father God, that we would live in faith, that we would not dwell in fear, Father, and that ultimately you would receive the glory and honor in each of our lives. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we just thank you for all, and we just give you the glory in all this. In Jesus' name, amen.